Welcome back to the channel everybody, I'm Dino. I have to say, snowmobiling certainly has changed over the years. When I started in snowmobiling, the majority of the sleds that you could buy were two-stroke snowmobiles. However, when I decided to buy this 2018 Skidoo Renegade Enduro, it came with the 900cc Ace four-stroke engine. Now, once the season was done, I turned to changing the oil. So I looked on the internet to see how to do that the best way possible, and I got a lot of different uh, sort of answers on how to do that, none of which really seemed too logical to me. So today, I wanna to show you how I change the oil in this thing, and hopefully pass on some information that I've learned about it. It's not a terribly hard process, and it is kind of fun. So sit back, grab something warm to drink, and enjoy. Dino's Tinker Shed. Now to warm the sled up, I really need to start by getting some cross ventilation in here. So I'm going to open up uh, both sets of doors on my on my shop and this just allows the the air to actually move between the two doors and pull out any exhaust that might be produced and to help that along I'm also going to use one of these squirrel cage fans I just set it right where the exhaust is and turn it on high and then it's just a matter of starting the sled up And once it's running, I'm fortunate that this particular sled has a temperature sensor on it. But I want to run it up to about 70 to 75 degrees Celsius. So I just let it burble away here until it comes up to temperature. And once it does, I just shut the engine off. Now I am fortunate that I have a skidoo lift inside my tinker shed. and allows me to get the sled up and off the ground and makes it a little bit easier to access some of the components on the underside of the sled. Now in order to actually drop the oil on one of these, there is a small oval shaped access panel located on the bottom side of the tunnel just behind the left hand side uh, control arms here. Now the cover plate is held in place with two Torx head uh, bolts, one of which you take out, the other which you loosen and just sort of move it out of the way. Now, I originally, I think, said it was a Phillips head, but it's actually a number 30 Torx. And I'm going to use it on a ratchet just because it makes it a little bit easier for me to get in there and access it. So let me see if I can set the camera up in such a way that you can see what I'm doing under there. Okay, let's get going. So here is the cover plate that hides our drain bolts. And it's held in, again, with two um, T30 headed screws, basically. Now I have a hard time getting to this with a regular screwdriver, so again I'm using a ratchet with a T30 head on it. But basically you just loosen one of these bolts and take the other one out, and then the cover plate will slide to the side and give you access to the drains underneath. Now the main drain bolt uses a 6mm Allen key head, and because of its location I need to use a funnel or it'll hit the cross member of my skidoo lift here. And there's a lot of oil, like three liters that comes out of here. You can see it now it's now it's gonna clear, of course. But there is two drain bolts. There's a second one on the left here that uses a T40 or a 10 millimeter socket to get this out. And it's the same process. You basically break it free, and then I'm gonna walk it out by hand here. But take a look at how much oil comes out. You know, some people don't even know there's a secondary drain on this but there is a lot of oil captured that has to be drained to properly do an oil change on this machine. I want to turn my attention to getting the oil filter off now. And to do that, we need to get inside the right hand side panel. So I'm pretty sure everybody knows how to do that, but I'll show you anyway. Both side covers are held in place in three locations here. So there's two rubber tabs that you pull open like this and then there's a push pad here that you pull out on. Now grab a hold of the top rubber strap and lift it up and the door swings open like magic. Now to get the exhaust off 
you're going to need some form of spring puller. Mine's pretty simple. They're like $8 to buy, but that allows you to pull the springs off, and that's really all that holds the exhaust on these things. To make it easier, I'm going to take this side panel right off, and how that works is they just basically lift up, they pull out the bottom, and they come off like that. They're pretty simple to do, and it's easy enough to just set aside. Located in behind the muffler is our oil filler cap. Now the manual indicates that you can take this out without taking the muffler off, but I want to get the muffler out of here to show you a little clearer what's involved with the oil filter. So let's start with the spring near the, uh, the actual chain case here. Now this one you can take off and just let it hang there. There's, the way the bracket is, it works quite well. However, up top here where the muffler meets the exhaust pipe, I always pop these ones off and take them out. Otherwise, they tend to fall down into the engine bay. Now, this particular spring I find to be the hardest to get off and put back on. And then that leaves one more up near the front control arms. And this one also pops off and can just hang inside of the muffler bay here. Now, getting the muffler out itself isn't particularly hard but you do have to wiggle it a little bit to get it up and out of the way. So just sort of wiggle it, lift it, move it around, and finally it'll come out for you. It's not too hard. Once the muffler's out, you can see clearly inside the engine bay, and this is why I wanted to get it out of the way, so I could show you better the actual oil cap here, which is held in place by three bolts. Now these have a T30 Torx head, or you can use an 8mm socket. Now, I'm just using an 8mm wrench here so you can see a little bit better. This back bolt is the one that really is difficult to get out with the muffler in place, but I do believe you can do it with a socket and an extension. What I'm going to do after I loosen the bolts is just pull them out by hand. Once you get this out, the cap just pops straight up. And there is an O-ring here. Now we're gonna replace this O-ring. It comes with the kit. You just wanna make sure that it, it comes off with the cover and you don't end up with two O-rings being crushed. Next, I'm just gonna pull and wiggle up on the oil filter. Now it sits on a metal spigot inside that cup. That's why it's a little hard to get out. And I'll show you that right here. So see that little rubber spigot right in the, or uh, metal spigot in the center? The rubber grommet on the filter fits over top of that, and that's why it's hard to get out and also a little bit difficult to get back in. Now I'm going to check my exhaust donut as well here just to make sure it's in good shape. And this one is. It, it's pretty much like new. So I'm going to wipe up the excess oil here with a paper towel. I'm not going to use any cleaners on it. And I gotta say, whoever JP is, boy, you make a great, great engine. I'll just use a machinist's pick here to lift off the old O-ring. I'm sure it would have been fine to reuse, but the kit comes with a new one, so we're gonna use the new one. Now getting this on here, because it's such a large diameter, is a little funny. You're gonna wanna roll the, the O-ring in place, and when you do that, it wants to spring back up. So you sort of have to work it around and kind of almost lift it and place it down over the, over the uh, ceiling surface there for it to stay. But eventually you'll get it. I know you will. And I'm going to use a little of the old oil to lubricate the rubber gasket here that fits over that spigot inside the filter cup. Lastly, I'm just going to take the two drain bolts I'll just wipe up any excess oil and then I'm going to switch out the old copper rings with new copper sealing rings. Again, some people reuse these, but the kit comes with new ones. So I'm just going to use the new ones and these I'm just going to throw away. So I'm going to, once I wiggle the filter down in place, I'm going to put the cap back over top and you'll see that it sits proud over top of the filter. And again, that's because of that rubber spigot or rubber gasket in the metal spigot. But just even using a socket by hand, you'll see it'll pull the cover down onto the cup quite easily. 
just take your time, tighten it in a cross pattern, and then come in and run the bolts up to the surface of the face so they're snug. And then we're gonna follow this up with a torque wrench. And these T30 bolts take 89 inch pounds or 10 Newton meters of torque to tighten them up. So I usually chase it up in two or three steps, just going around in a circle. And that's all you need to seal the cup back. Next, I'm gonna put the drain bolts back in now. The challenge for these is I need to use my quarter drive torque wrench. So I had to actually make a six millimeter Allen key out of an old socket and I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket here and I'll just torque these down the same way. Now that we have the bolts in for the drains, we're gonna install the exhaust. So the actual exhaust pipe itself fits down through the floor in the engine bay here and there's a small hook that fits on a bracket on the body itself. Next, I'm gonna reach through the floorboards here, through the footwell, I'm gonna grab that first spring with my spring puller and I'm just gonna clip it onto its hole. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the lower front spring here to secure the bottom of the exhaust. These ones go on really, really easy. Now the first one on the upper portion, so this would be to the front of the machine, also goes on relatively easily. I can hook the spring on the on the actual exhaust pipe and pull it out onto the muffler. But that second one, the one that's closer to the fuel tank, is hard. I actually made a special tool here out of a large screwdriver that I bought on sale for $7. And I carved a notch in it, and this allows me to push the spring onto the exhaust pipe instead of pulling it onto the muffler. This works really good and I've had great success with this in the past. Just like the other side, we have to take this side cover off um, to gain access here for you to see what I'm doing. But we're going to fill the oil up now. So it's the same thing, just lifts up, pulls out, and you can gain access. The manual says to actually take the belt guard off to gain access to the fill port here. So I'm gonna do that. It's really easy to do, and it might give a little bit better vantage point for everybody. Now we have really good access to the fill port with our dipstick. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put a funnel in here, and I will add the 3.3 liters of oil that they provide um, from, from uh, this XPS. 0W40. All right, we'll do that. We'll check for leaks, and then if there's no leaks, we'll fire it up and continue to check for leaks. Now, whenever you use one of these types of oil jugs, make sure that the spout is at the top of the oil jug when you're filling the funnel. It stops the actual container from sort of glugging, for lack of a better term. So you can see here, same thing. See how nice and smooth it pours like this? And the nice thing about this particular funnel is when you get almost to the end, well, you can stick the whole container in there and it'll get every last drop of oil without you having to stand there. Next, I'm just gonna fire this up for about 30 seconds just to let the oil circulate and fill all the galleries and the actual filter. And you can actually hear a change in the engine sound as the oil filter fills up. Next, I'm gonna run around and check for any visual leaks on the outside. There doesn't seem to be any. And I'll get a flashlight and I'm just going to look inside to make sure that the filter itself isn't leaking as well and it's good and tight at this point. Looks good. So lastly we're just going to check the oil here. So I shut the machine off, I clean off the dipstick and I fully insert it and twist it and then I come back out and as long as the oil is in between these two marks it's good and this one is. Basically now I can just tighten down the cap, I'll clean up and all the drips and that, and then I'll put the covers all back on. Now there's only one thing left to do now, and that's crawl back underneath and tighten up the access panel. And we're done.
That's all there is to changing the oil on one of these 900 Ace engines. Now, Skidoo recommends that you check the oil every 10 hours of operation. So essentially every day of riding, you wanna make sure that the oil's topped up. Now in the three or four years that I've owned this sled, I've never had to put a drop of oil in it over the course of the season, which is a testament to the quality of these Rotax engines. Now there's lots of great, great four stroke engines out there. The Ace is just one of them. And I really actually have grown to enjoy the four stroke engine over the two stroke for the type of riding that I do. So until next time, I hope you get out in your shop and get to work on one of your snowmobiles or motorcycles or jet skis or whatever interests you. And I'll see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. Bye for now.